Michael Porter's The Diamond Model was published in 1990 in his book The Competitive Advantage of Nations. It is a model that can help us understand why a nation becomes the home base for successful international competitors in a particular industry and other nations don't. He argues that the old theories, proposed by Adam Smith and David Ricardo, are not sufficient to explain competitiveness between technology advantage in the nations of today. In Porter's diamond model, there are four broad determinants responsible for such diversity. They mark the playing field for the nation's industries. These determinants are factor conditions, demand conditions, related and supporting industries, and firm strategy, structure and rivalry. The model also points out that there are two additional determinants that influence the four main determinants. These are governmental policy and the role of chance events. Let us review the definition of each determinant. The first is factor conditions. The factors most important to competitive advantage in industries in advanced economies are not inherited but are created within a nation. To understand the role of factors in competitive advantage, it is necessary to distinguish between types of factors. The first demarcation is between advanced and basic factors. Advanced factors of production are skilled labour, knowledge, capital and infrastructure. Basic factors, such as unskilled labour and raw materials, can be obtained by any company and do not generate competitive advantage. The second distinction is between specialised and generalised factors. Specialised factors involve narrowly skilled personnel, infrastructure with specific properties, knowledge bases in particular fields, and other factors with relevance to a limited range or even to just a single industry. Examples could be a scientific institute with expertise in optics, a port specialised in handling bulk chemicals, or a pool of venture capital seeking to fund software companies. Germany has possessed competitive advantage in the production of automobiles for many years, because the nation has advantageous factors through its highly educated personnel, such as graduate engineers and computer scientists, and the industry has specialised factors, they have highly skilled workers trained in specialised apprenticeship programmes and graduates from special university programmes. The second broad determinant of national competitive advantage is demand conditions. The main factor is home demand conditions, which have influence in nearly every industry. The composition of home demand shapes how firms perceive, interpret and respond to buyer needs. Nations gain competitive advantage in industries where the home demand gives local firms a clearer or earlier picture of buyer needs than foreign rivals can have. It is not merely the size of the market that is important but it is the intensity and sophistication of the demand that is significant for competitive advantage. If consumers are sophisticated, they will make demands for sophisticated products and that, in turn, will help the production of sophisticated products. Gradually, the country will achieve competitive advantage in such production. As significant as early home market penetration 
is early or abrupt saturation. Early saturation forces companies to continue innovating and upgrading, as well as finding international markets for their products. In consumer electronic products, saturation in the Japanese home market is rapid and product life cycles are extremely short. This is because buyers have homogenous tastes combined with sophistication and status consciousness. This combination gives them a competitive advantage in comparison with foreign rivals. The third broad determinant is related and supporting industries. The presence of internationally competitive supplier industries in a nation creates advantages in downstream industries. It gives efficient, early, rapid and sometimes preferential access to the most cost-effective inputs. The benefit of home-based suppliers may be found in the process of innovation and upgrading. Firms gain quick access to information, to new ideas and insights, and to supplier innovations. The presence in a nation of competitive industries that are related often leads to new competitive industries. Related industries are those in which firms can coordinate or share activities in the value chain when competing. An example is pharmaceutical firms who use the same university when testing new drugs. The fourth and last broad determinant is firm strategy, structure and rivalry. Many aspects of a nation, too numerous to generalise, influence the ways in which firms are organised and managed. Some of the most important aspects are attitudes towards authority, norms of interpersonal interaction, attitudes of workers towards management and vice versa, social norms of individualistic or group behaviour and professional standards. These in turn grow out of the educational system, social and religious history, family structures and many other unique national conditions. Sharp differences exist within and among nations in the goals that the firms seek to achieve as well as the motivations of their employees and managers. Domestic rivalry creates particularly visible pressure on each other to improve. Vigorous local competition not only sharpens advantages at home, but pressures domestic firms to sell abroad in order to grow. These were the four main determinants. We shall now review governmental policy. It influences all four of the determinants through various regulatory and deregulatory measures. Policies implemented without consideration of how they influence the entire system of determinants are as likely to undermine national advantage as enhance them. Government affects factor conditions in many ways. Among the most important roles of government is creating and upgrading factors, whether they are skilled human resources, the bases for scientific knowledge or infrastructure. Among these factors, there is little doubt that education and training are decisive in national competitive advantage. The fact is that world standards for workers technical personnel and managers are high and rising. No nation will prosper unless its citizens meet them. Next, we shall consider the government's effect on demand conditions. Government procurement can be a positive force for upgrading national competitive advantage if they provide early demand for advanced new sophisticated products or services from local firms. An example is the Danish government's early decision to pay for hearing aids for those who needed them. 
This was an important reason for the international success of Danish firms in this industry. Next, we should look at the government's effect on related and supporting industries. The government must support these industries in the same way as the industries that have the advantage. Government has an important role in nurturing and reinforcing clusters. The last of the four determinants that governments affect is firm strategy, structure and rivalry. Government policy has numerous ways of influencing how firms are created, organised, manage their goals and how they compete. Sustaining and enhancing competitive advantage requires that a nation's firms take a global approach to strategy. Government policy should seek to avoid currency restrictions, restrictions on foreign investment and restrictions on the inflow and outflow of skilled personnel that impede internationalisation. Few roles of government are more important to the upgrading of an economy than ensuring vigorous domestic rivalry, and this requires strong antitrust policies, because a dominant domestic competitor rarely results in international competitive advantage. Now we shall review the last of the determinants that are influencing the four main determinants. This is chance. Chance events are developments outside the control of firms and usually the nation's government, such as pure inventions, breakthroughs in basic technologies, wars, external political developments and major shifts in foreign demand. They create discontinuities that can unfreeze or reshape industry structure and provide opportunity for one nation's firms to supplant another's. Chance has played an important role in shifting competitive advantage in many industries. A shift that changed competitive advantage was the oil shock in the 1970s. The oil shock ultimately helped upgrade Japanese industry because Japan was especially vulnerable to energy costs and took aggressive steps towards energy conservation. The diamond must be seen as a system. The effect of one determinant often depends on the state of others. An example is the German automobile industry which has national competitive advantage. The industry has four major players. These are VW, BMW, Mercedes and Opel, and they are all placed in the south of Germany. The factor conditions are influenced by the other determinants in different ways. Home demand influences the particular types of factors that are created in demand conditions. The German automobile buyers have sophisticated demand. They expect better and better cars. This tends to channel social and private investments into related factor creation. In the south of Germany, they have well-developed specialised educational and scientific institutions geared towards the automobile industry. The pool of factors and rate at which they are created are also shaped by the presence of related and supporting industries. The automobile industry is supported by companies such as Bosch, Siemens and the IT company SAP. These companies belong to industries that possess or stimulate their own mechanisms for creating and upgrading specialised factors. Some of the factors are usually transferable, such as ERP systems from SAP. A cluster of domestic automobile rivals stimulates factor creation. As the automobile industry is viewed as prestigious in Germany, it stimulates the best job seekers 
to invest in gaining specialised skills. Now we shall review how the demand conditions are influenced by the other determinants. The most important effect is probably domestic rivalry. Intense domestic rivalry creates home demand through product and marketing innovation. The presence of successful related and supporting industries can also enhance international demand for German cars. The overall image of German products as high quality is also carried over to the car industry. The internationalization of home demand of high-end cars has factor-creating mechanisms. The automobile industry will attract foreign students and firms. And this will make training and education in Germany the center for innovation in the industry. Related and supporting industries are also influenced. Factor conditions in the automobile industry, especially factor-creating mechanisms, have influenced the development of related and supporting industries. The universities in the automobile cluster will educate students to excellence in IT, such as CAD-CAM, with case studies from the industry. Where home demand is significant, more and specialised suppliers emerge to address unmet needs. An example is logistic companies, dedicated to serving the automobile industry. They are working more and more efficiently in delivering German cars around the world. The concentration of rivals in the German automobile industry has led to the growth of a thriving and highly specialised group of supplier industries, ranging from light bulbs, tyres, brakes, different material composites, etc. Now we shall review how the last determinant, firm strategy, structure and rivalry, is influenced by the other three determinants. Demand conditions enhance rivalry in the automobile industry when demanding home buyers continuously expect news from the car world. The rivalry in the German automobile industry is almost personal. They all want to deliver the next wonder car. Related and supporting industries will deliver new ways of doing things to the automobile industry. The factor conditions could nullify or reinforce the international advantages of the industry in Germany. Specialised factor creation mechanisms could spawn new entrants, or usually startups, in the industry. One of the universities could be the source for an energy efficient, CO2 neutral, high performance car. This would, of course, affect the strategy of the firms in the industry. We also have to see how the determinants, government and chance, affect the four major determinants and thereby the national competitive advantage. The change from petrol-driven cars to another source of energy will create discontinuities that allow shifts in competitive position. It has the potential to nullify the advantages of the firms in the German automobile industry and creates the possibility that a new nation's car-making industry might supplant them. The government can support research in fields that help develop a German energy-efficient, CO2-neutral, high-performance car. Let us now consider some criticisms of the model. Porter feels that sizeable domestic demand must be present for attaining competitive advantage, but there are industries that have flourished only because of demand from foreign consumers. An example is Nestle, a lion's share of the earnings from which come from foreign sales. 
If the domestic suppliers of inputs are not available, the backward linkage will be meaningless as the determinant, related and supporting industries, doesn't exist in that nation. Availability of natural resources, according to Porter, is not the only condition for attaining competitive advantage. There must be other factors. But a study has shown that some Canadian industries emerged on the global map only on the basis of such natural resource availability. Nevertheless, these limitations do not undermine the significance of Porter's National Competitive Advantage Theory, especially in advanced industries located in advanced countries.